Good morning, everyone. It's Friday, April 24th, 2020, 4-24-20. And today we're going to again look at uh, those words from the book of Luke, chapter 24, and uh, verse 19, I believe it is, where we're looking for the word prophet. And it's in the story of the disciples from Emmaus as they're going back home. And earlier this week, we talked about what is a prophet? A prophet is someone who speaks for God. Well, who can do that more perfectly than Jesus, our Savior? Uh, today, I also want us to think about others who speak for God, um, those who prophesy his word to us. Not um, a prophesy that tells this is what's going to happen, as if it's something new, but telling us what God has already told us has happened. Um, and also what will happen because what we know of from scripture as well. Uh, remember, you have a hymn recitation today, The King of Glory Comes, and so let's practice that together here today. We'll see if I can do just verses three and four. It's hard to do that. Sometimes I get started singing and I just start at the beginning, but let's give it a try. I'll see if I can do it. If you were here, you would help me do it right. You know that. The King of glory comes, the nation rejoices. Open the gates before him, lift up your voices. He gave his life for us, the Lamb of salvation. He took upon himself the sin of the nations. The King of glory comes, the nation rejoices. Open the gates before him, lift up up your voices. He conquered sin and death. He truly has risen, and he will share with us his heavenly kingdom. The King of glory comes, the nation rejoices. Open the gates before him, lift up your voices. Oh, how I wish you were here to sing that with me. Your voices are so wonderful. I have a question for you. When you hear God's word, do your hearts burn within you? Now, I don't mean the kind of heartburn that you get when you ate something spicy and it doesn't feel good. I mean that, ooh, excited, tingling. How does hearing God's word make you feel? Sometimes when we hear God's word, it cuts us to the heart, doesn't it? It shows us our sin and we're reminded of how sinful we are and how much we need a Savior Jesus. Sometimes God's word can make us feel joy when uh, we hear, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, will never die. Words such as that, those promises. It can be a comfort. Surely I am with you always to the end of the age. It can be a warning. Be alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around looking for someone to devour. Now, I don't mean that we have faith just because of a feeling that we get from God's word. That's not what I mean. But sometimes we have to pay better attention, I think. Now remember, when Jesus is talking to the Emmaus disciples, at first his appearance is not, uh, they are, he is not recognized as Jesus, their Savior, as that prophet that they knew so well. It is kept hidden from them. And yet, what made him visible to them? What made them recognize who he was and say, Oh, the Savior, he truly has risen. Would you listen, please? Or if you have your Bibles out, please follow along. I'd like to read the story of the Emmaus disciples to you. Now on that same day, the first day that Jesus had risen from the dead, two of them were going to a village named Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about all of these things that had happened. And while they were talking and discussing this, Jesus himself approached and began to walk along with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. He said to them, What are you talking about as you walk along? Saddened, they stopped. One of them, named Cleopas, answered him, 
Are you the only visitor in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things? he asked them. They replied, the things concerning Jesus of Nazareth, a man who was a prophet. There's our word, isn't it? Mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, the chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be condemned to death, and they crucified him. But we were hoping that he was going to redeem Israel. Not only that, but besides all this, it is now the third day since these things happened. Also, some of our women of our group, they amazed us. They were at the tomb early in the morning. When they did not find his body, they came back saying they had even seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb. They found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. And Jesus said to them, How foolish you are and slow of heart to believe all the prophets have spoken. Did not the Christ have to suffer these things and to enter his glory? And then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village where they were going, he acted as if he were going to travel farther. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, since it is almost evening, the day is almost over. And so Jesus went in to stay with them. When he reclined at the table with them, he took the bread, blessed it, broke it, and began giving it to them. Suddenly their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. Then he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was speaking to us along the road and while he was explaining the scriptures to us? And they got up at that very hour and returned to Jerusalem. They found the eleven and those who were with them assembled together. They were saying, The Lord really has been raised. He has appeared to Simon. They themselves described what had happened along the road and how they recognized him when he broke the bread. What was it that made their hearts burn? It wasn't just seeing Jesus and recognizing him finally when he broke the bread. No, it was hearing his word, paying attention to it, listening to it, taking it to heart, and finally having that aha moment. Oh, that's what that scripture means. Oh, that's what Jesus was saying. How about you? Will your hearts burn today as you hear God's word? On Sunday as you hear his word? Or whichever day you ch are choosing uh, to worship and perhaps watch a uh, video service? Yes. And part of that is being willing to pay attention, being willing to listen. How blessed we are to have a pastor like Pastor Strand and our principal, Mr. Rosano, and all of your other teachers, both here at school and your Sunday school teachers. And think of who else teaches you God's word, your parents, maybe grandparents. How blessed you are to have people who love God's word and want to share it with you. Let's close with a hymn. And uh, first, though, I'd like to do a prayer from our hymnal. And it's the prayer for pastors and teachers. And we pray. O oh, ascended Lord, thank you for the gift of pastors and teachers to feed your flock. Enable them by the power of the Spirit to stand firm in the midst of the trials and stresses of this world. Give them the courage to speak your word faithfully and the grace to reflect your love in their actions. And now let's sing together. Hymn 436, Jesus, Shepherd of the Sheep. Jesus, Shepherd of the Sheep, who your Father's flock does keep, safe we wake and safe we sleep, guarded still by you. In your promise firm we stand, none can take us from your hand. Speak we here at your command, we will follow you. By your blood our souls were bought, 
by your life salvation wrought. By your light our feet are taught, Lord, to follow you. Father, draw us to your Son, we with joy will follow on, till the work of grace is done, there to live with you. We in robes of glory dressed, join the assembly of the blessed, gather to eternal rest in the fold with you. And another amen. All right. I look forward to hearing you uh, with your hymn recitation today, whether you sing it for me or say it. Either way, it'll be nice to hear your voices. All right. Have a great rest of the day. I look forward to seeing you in our other classes.